Now we are going to talk about a very very important concept um, that underlines uh, almost all electrochemistry and electrochemical engineering system, which is electrochemical cell and uh, cell potential, the voltage measured between electrodes for an electrochemical cell. So what is an electrochemical cell? Electrochemical cell is a basic device that consists of at two electrodes separated by at least one electrolyte. So at least one electrolyte, at least one phase that conducts primarily ions and two electrodes, one positive electrode one negative electrode. One where oxidation happens and the one where reduction happens. Okay? That's a electrochemical cell. One electrolyte quite often in the center and the two electrodes, one side negative, the other side positive. One side going through oxidation reaction, the other side going through reduction reaction. This device is called an electrochemical cell. To give an example, we would have zinc and copper metals immersed in a zinc chloride copper chloride mixed solution. And the zinc metal and the copper metal can be connected through an external circuit. And of course, the external circuit could be through a voltmeter or just be open circuit. This is a schematic. As we said, zinc metal and copper metal sheets are inserted into a single solution that contains both dissolved zinc chloride and dissolved copper chloride. And the zinc metal and the copper metal are connected through a external circuit, such as through this REXT, resistance for external circuit. And of course, you can also add a voltmeter across the two electrodes. Okay, this would be one example. And actually, it is the basic concept behind one of the oldest zinc copper battery. And some other uh, slightly different variation would have a membrane that separate the solution into two parts. And we'll talk about those later in this course. So this is one example, two metals inverted into a single solution that contains the salt of the two metals and the two metals are connected through an external circuit. Of course, for open circuit condition, this R external goes to infinity. Another example would be zinc metal inserted to zinc chloride solution. Zinc metal inserted to, into zinc chloride solution well, on the other electrode, we have platinum, PT metal, inverted into dilute hydrogen chloride solution with bubbling hydrogen gas. So on now, instead of one container or one beaker, we would have two containers or two beakers. In one of the beakers, we have zinc metal inserted into zinc chloride solution. And in the other beaker, we would have platinum metal inserted into HCl, hydrogen chloride acidic solution. But then you would also bubble hydrogen gas into the beaker on the right that contains hydrogen chloride solution. Okay. In between those two beakers, we could have a salt bridge such as potassium chloride salt bridge that allows the ions to move between the two beakers so that we can complete the 
circuit if the zinc metal and the platinum metal are connected through an so-called external circuit. Of course, if you want, you can also add a voltmeter to measure the potential difference between the two electrodes, between the zinc metal electrode and the platinum metal electrode. Okay, so this is another example, which we separated, clearly separated the two metals into two different solutions, but with a thought bridge that connects the two solutions and the two electrodes, the two metals that conduct electrons are connected through an external circuit with resistance of REXT. Of course, this external circuit could just be open circuit. Okay? So these are two examples, and we will talk more about these two examples, but both of them are so called, as you see, electrochemical cell. They each contain two electrodes one negative electrode, one positive electrode. One negative electrode and one positive electrode separated by at least one electrolyte. Here we would have one electrolyte, two electrolyte, but in between we have a salt bridge which you can view it as another electrolyte, but at least one electrolyte as what we see here. Okay? So, as you see, no matter what's the cell construction, if we have two electrodes and one or more electrolytes between them, we would have so-called cell potential, specifically electrochemical cell potential, which means if you put a voltmeter between the two electrodes, you are going to measure a potential difference without applying any external power source. Let's say you are not applying additional batteries in between the copper and the copper and zinc between the zinc and platinum without applying any external power source typically there will be a potential difference between the two electrodes just because they are two different metals or because they have different solution as well as different metals there will be a potential difference that can be measured between the two electrodes, between the negative electrode and the positive electrode, between the electrode where oxidation happens and the electrode where reduction happens. Okay, so that's cell potential. Even you're going to get it even without applying external power source between the two electrodes. And the exact electrode, uh, exact potential value, what are going to measure the voltage, exact voltage difference between the two electrodes depends on the cell construction. The cell construction. You can imagine the potential difference we measured between copper and the zinc in this cell would be different from the potential difference that you measure between platinum and a zinc for the other cell, electrochemical cell. It depends on cell construction such as material used, the cathode, anode, the solu electrolyte or electrolyte solution, the concentration of these different species in the electrolyte solution, as well as T for temperature, P for pressure. All these together would influence the exact voltage or potential that you measure between the two electrodes for a given electrochemical cell. The potential, as we will discuss, also depends on external uh, circuit resistance. For example, if you have zero resistance, which means so-called short circuit condition, the potential you are measuring will be close to zero. On the other hand, if you have open circuit, which means the external resistance goes towards infinity, the external resistance goes towards infinity, you will have open circuit voltage, and over there you are going to measure 
a different cell potential and quite often that will be the maximum and sometimes we call it equilibrium cell potential. We'll talk about these cell potential, the voltage difference you measure between the two electrodes in greater detail later.